Uh, let me tell you what I love about my job. You know, when I found that first uh, mainframe terminal at Burlingame High School in the late 70s, I, um, I, I, you know, saw this incredible, you know, opportunity that I could actually write code, watch something happen. Well, there were like thousands of computers then, and those were the mainframe days. And then as we got into the 80s, <laughs> incredible work of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates turned into millions of PCs all, all over the world. You know, but what have we been talking about here at this conference now for so many years? We've talked about those millions of computers turning into billions, billions of computers. And this, this computer, you know, that's in my pocket has more power than that mainframe computer that I started with uh, in the late 70s. How many people here have one of these with them today? You know, about five billion of these now in the world. Pretty awesome. And um, how many people here have more than one of these with them today? Yeah, we have a special session for all of you. <laughs> and it's not just computers are getting hooked up, it's everything is getting hooked up. Mike, you know, we, what are we talking about here? Dreamforce and what have we been talking about all over the world? We're talking about it. Cameras connected and and uh, my car is connected, and last year, remember, my toothbrush was connected, and uh, we saw this inc you know, incredible new wearables like Will I Am is, is creating. I mean, everything is getting hooked up, and that is turning into trillions, trillions of customer interactions. Trillions of customer interactions. So we can just see that, you know, for all of our companies, there's an imperative, and it's an imperative of engagement. It's an imperative to connect, an imperative to connect. But the problem is that even though we're building all these connected products and we're building, you know, all, all of us are connected to our computers and these apps, you know, the question becomes, is your company connected? Are your salespeople and your service people and your marketing, are all your employees connected? Are your partners connected? You know, is your whole company connected to your customers? And that's what our company is all about. That's what Salesforce is all about. Our vision is to build that platform that allows our customers to connect. And we know that if you connect, that you, if you engage deeply, and that if you interact, and you remember those customers and build those one-on-one -on -one relationships with those customers, well, you get incredible success. Incredible success, and we all know that. We've seen the rise of our customers, whether it's in sales or service or marketing, you know, by building and delivering on that vision. And our vision at Salesforce is simple. It's simple to build that customer success platform and to inspire all of you to become a customer company. Of course, some companies are pivoted to their competitors. Some companies are pivoted to their shareholders. Some companies are pivoted within. But ultimately, our companies need to get pivoted back to the customer. And we ask all of you to become a customer company. And as we work on all of our different capabilities at Salesforce, whether it's in sales or service, whether it's in marketing, whether it's in community, whether it's in apps, all of our different clouds. Oh, and there's a new cloud coming, question mark. There's a big question mark up there. No, it's a big surprise for everybody. And I want to let it out of the bag. We work on all these solutions, getting them together, all your customer information together. It's about building that customer success platform to help you to connect with your customers in a whole new way. This summer, I want to tell you, one of the things I do is I love getting out on the road. I love being with our customers. I got on an airplane and I flew to a great city. Uh, you never know what's going to happen to you in Amsterdam. Uh, we won't go into the details, but I'll tell you that um, we, I went to one of our great customers, Philips. We talked about this last year at the show, so I had to go and see their R&D facility, and they have these gorgeous new ultrasound machines, each one with a help button. Oh, it's not just the uh, Amazon Kindle that has a Mayday button. It's the ultrasound machines at Philips, and when they push the button in their lab, their call center lit up, the agent is talking to me right on the ultrasound machine, they're able to dialogue with their field service agents right inside their customers who are wearing, you know, things like Google Glasses. And it was an incredible experience. And I said, this really is a service revolution. When the products 
and the employees and the customers and the partners are so deeply integrated. Everywhere I went, of course, I'm always wearing, you probably know, my Fitbit. I love my Fitbit. And I'll tell you that um, I'm always counting my steps, always trying to get in 10,000 steps every single day. And I'm in a whole community with Fitbit. Uh, I've got the whole Fitbit app, the whole ecosystem. And one of my good friends is uh, Michael Dell, and he's also wearing his Fitbit. And I can't figure out, he's always number one in the community. He's kind of like doing twice as many steps as I'm doing every single day. I figure that either I need to be walking around and doing more keynotes, or maybe he's taking this thing and putting it on his dog's collar at night. I'm not sure what it is, but I'll tell you, it's it's, it's, it's hard to compete with that guy. And, you know, Fitbit has built this whole incredible environment where they're sending me messages and their partners are integrated. I just bought a new treadmill at home, and I had to put my Fitbit information right into the treadmill. That was really cool. And I realized, you know, that's about one-to-one relationships. They're doing it probably better than anybody. It's a local company right here in San Francisco. And they're really inspiring me that marketing is changing, that it's a marketing revolution. So it's a sales revolution, it's a service revolution, it's a marketing revolution. And when I was in Europe, I got this great call from Frank Blake, who's the CEO of Home Depot. And he's like, yeah, we're gonna build these communities. I have this interesting problem. You know, I have all these stores all over the world, but when you walk into a Home Depot store and you end up in a, a, an aisle like the lighting aisle, there's an incredible lighting expert there. But what if I was somehow able to link up all my lighting experts in all my stores all over the world into a community? And then what if I was to bring in my contractors that I work with and all these incredible partners I have? And what if I was to bring my consumers in? And I said, this is a huge vision, Frank. It's a huge vision. And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to build this community of Home Depot. And today, just a few short months later, if you go to community.homedepot.com, you'll see that community. It's inspiring of what we can all do to bring together our customers, our partners, and our employees. If you go down to the trade show, if you go down to the trade show, you're going, to ha- you're going to see Neil Young's new Pono music player. How many of you have already seen the Pono music player down there? Okay, this is an incredible product, and it looks like a Toberlone bar. You know that chocolate bar that's like a triangle? It looks like a Toberlone bar, and what Neil has designed is something that when you put your headphones in, you're listening to the original analog masters of all these great musicians. And the way he did it is he brings a FLAC, what they call a FLAC file, F-L-A-C, instead of an MP3 file into the player. He has a full analog, um, full analog experience. You put your headphone in, you put it on, and it is like you are with those musicians. Um, I, I had an opportunity to play it recently for, with Will I Am, and we put on Yellow Submarine with the Beatles. It's one of my favorite songs. And it was like the Beatles were standing there. Well, I invite you to go and try that out yourself. And Neil is going to be here Thursday to launch Pono and his player. But down on that trade show floor, you'll see something else. You'll see that when Neil was building the player, he also built community in. And he's building community around every artist and every, around every track and every album. And, and he's built the whole community as an integrated part of the product. And I think that's a huge vision. And if you go to ponomusic.com, you'll see how we're running that whole service for him. Finally, I ended up in this great city in Germany, Berlin. What a transformational city and an inspiring city. And I was in Berlin, and I've seen all these great startups emerging, all these changes that are happening in Berlin. And I go to an incredible company that you probably haven't heard of, a German company, Coca-Cola. And I'm there. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, too. I'm there in Coca-Cola and talking with their CEO, and he's talking about this, you know, the new currency of business is speed and all these incredible visions. And it's like, Mark, you better not make any, you Mark, you better not make any decisions in the office. You gotta be out there with the customers. I'm like, this guy is like a better salesman than I am. And then he goes, yeah, and everything in my company is mobile. He says, I'm 100% mobile now. I'm, all my employees are are on mobile. All of my customers are on mobile. All of my consumers are on mobile. And he had built all these great mobile apps. And the reason I got there, they were all on Salesforce One. 
And I said, I got to bring this guy to Dreamforce. Hey, we got to commute. And I'm going to tell you this story in one second. But it just occurred to me, Coca-Cola became a software company. That every company was becoming a software company and a cloud company. And every company that I was visiting, they were all kind of getting into our business. Said, hold on, do I want all these companies in our business? I'm like, it's too late. Everyone's in our business. It's great. And then I recognized Wow, this is a data revolution. You know, did you know that 90% of the world's data was created in the last two years? I didn't realize this. And it's because when you hook up all the products and all the employees and all the partners, you're just creating all this data. There's going to be 10 times more data, mobile data, by 2020, 19 times more unstructured data, 50 times more product data. And as I kind of went on that and finished up that trip to Europe, it was a bit of a data, I was kind of witnessing kind of this data divide. All this data, the customers really didn't know what they wanted to do. I think that when you look at companies like Microsoft and Oracle and SAP who are still delivering those solutions uh, before any of this stuff was invented, they had those data products of the past, it's no reason that they're all turning over all their CEOs. Because we need a new vision, not a new version. We need something to really break through when it comes to data. This is a huge opportunity. It's a huge opportunity for a wave of innovation. It's a huge opportunity for a wave of change in our industry to build something that really reflects the power of mobile and social and the cloud and fill this data gap and cross this chasm And what we need. What we need, what we need is a wave.